Back in season one, I did an episode on motion, and I focused almost entirely on moving against the bow to generate power. But lately, I've been teaching my students how to move with the bow to play more legato. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you an exercise that I've been doing with my students in my classroom to help my students play passages that are more legato, maybe quieter, and that need a little bit more finesse. When you're incorporating any sort of motion, you have to insist on good setup. If your students aren't sitting up in their chairs with good posture, they can use all of the motion they want and it won't help them at all. You also need to make sure that the instrument is integrated with the body. And what do I mean by that? I mean, the, in the instrument is within your center of mass. Your instrument comes to you, you don't come to the instrument. Too often do I see cellists with their cellos too far in front of them, or the bass players with the basses way out here, violinists with their scrolls drooping on the floor. So let's address posture first. Then all we have to do is simply have our students push off with their right foot when they down bow and the left foot when they up bow. At first, your students are gonna wanna lean over and that's not good technique. So think about a tennis player or a baseball player. They use their legs a lot to generate power. Why? Because it shifts their entire center of mass. When we lean instead of push off with our feet, it puts us off balance. And I know there's plenty of musicians that do this and they dance when they play and that's fine, but that's not what I'm teaching here. We're not feeling the music, all right? This is practical motion for practical motion exercises. If you wanna learn that kind of style, go to a dance class. I'm about functional music here to improve your sound. So to help mask your students' bow changes, you have them shift their weight slightly before the next bow. If they're counting eighth notes, they can move an eighth note before the next bow and allow the arm to catch up. And this has sort of a rubber band effect when they feel a mild stretch before the bow change for the next bowing as it recovers. So here's what it should look like. I regret not doing this back in season one, but better late than never, I finally have a moving with the bow video so that when I do my how to teach this piece uh, video, I have something to refer to if we ever need to move that way. And if you arrived here from one of my future videos, please say hi to my future self and ask him to please take whatever precautions are necessary to prevent this terrible disaster. It doesn't make sense right now, but in the future it will. Oh, and if anyone has a fuel injector for a 1981 DeLorean DMC-12, the one with the 2.9 liter V6 engine, part number 35-01628, please drop your contact information in the comments section below. It helps feed the algorithm and gets my videos out to more people. Okay, see you in the next video.